This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Okay, here's the video you guys were all asking for. I'm finally making it after playing with these DZO Vespa Primes for a little bit. I wanted to compare them to my Mikey cinema lenses, which I've just done a video over, which you can go check out up here in the corner if you haven't watched that already. So there's already a, a lot of videos online talking about the DZO Vespa Primes. I'm not gonna do a full review of the lenses. I'm just gonna compare them to my Mikey cinema lenses, which are basically in the same market. They're both cinema house lenses. They both fit full frame sensors. They both are at T2. One, got proper gearing on them. They're nice, their nice lens is definitely for the cost and we're gonna compare those today in this video. So if you watch my YouTube short that I put out about a week ago, I summarized this review pretty quick. Basically, I gave, gave a lot of points to the Vespids based on their size because they have an 80 millimeter outer diameter on the front, which is more common for your common map boxes. And they have a 77 millimeter inner thread here, which is very common for filter sizes. Whereas the Mikeys have an 85 on the outside and then an 82 on the inside, less common filter sizes. Not the end of the world, but something to consider when buying these lenses. They're pretty close on the same size. I would say the Vespids seem like a little bit smaller, not much, maybe a little bit lighter. Uh, not nothing to make one better than the other. I'm using the EF version on both of these and I'm doing all these tests on my RED Komodo. I'm actually using this new Mikey RF2 EF adapter for the lenses. There's a little drop in ND filter, which is pretty fun. So I'll be using that as a control for the rest of these tests. That way I'm not putting filters on and off the lenses. But just so you do know, there is ND filters behind this. So there's gonna be a little bit of a color shift probably from that ND filter, but it'll be consistent across the board here. Now I am not shooting this on a full frame camera, but these both these lenses do cover full frame sensors. I I just don't have a full frame camera available for these tests right now, but that's not really a big deal. I mean, you might be using these on full frame or you may not be. Either way, the bokeh is gonna look the same, the sharpness is gonna look the same. Relatively speaking, everything's gonna be the same. Uh, you can watch all the other tests online. These definitely do cover full frame and has edge to edge sharpness, like a, you know, good enough on both sets for full frame. So that's really all you need to know about that. Okay, I'm gonna put this down now because I don't wanna hold it the whole time. The Mikeys definitely have a more yellow greenish tone to them, whereas the DZO Vespids have more of this kind of magenta with a little bit of a cooler tone to them. Something to definitely consider when you're trying to pick out lenses that you want. This is gonna do a lot to your skin tones. I think that I prefer the Mikeys more just because it's more of that kind of creamy, yellow texture, which seems just a little bit more cinematic than the kind of magenta blue. That's gonna be more of your kind of, I don't know, clean, maybe corporate look. But, but in reality, if you just throw this into your editing platform and add a little tint or play with the color a little bit, you can get them to match if you wanted to. That's not what I'm gonna try to do here. Um, we're just gonna try to look at them and you know, just their kind of baseline color right out of the box. I do feel that if something is a little bit more yellow, then pink, the yellow is kind of a more natural color, something that you would see from the sun or from a tungsten light. And so it looks just more natural on the image already, especially you can see here with these white walls. If they're a little bit more yellow, that's okay. But when you see the kind of magenta color, that's out of place. That's not something that you more commonly see in reality. So I'm gonna give points to the Mikey when it comes to the color rendition. Now, both these lenses are kind of, you know, advertised as being in the realm of between vintage and modern kind of glass. So not too sharp, but not too soft. Um, by looking at these side by side, I do think that the DZO Vespids are sharper. Um, they're just a little bit more crisp, a little bit more detail right off the bat, whereas the Mikeys are having a little bit more of that vintage-y soft look to them. But with that, I can tell that with the Bokeh, I think I prefer the Bokeh on the Mikeys because it just does look a little bit more vintage. There's something a little bit more um, soft about it in the way that like my vintage Canon FDs have, whereas the DZO is probably just a little bit closer to more of your more contemporary lenses with a little bit more of that sharp sharpness, a little bit more of that crispness to them. Now, personally me, I'm not really a person that likes to flare the lens that often. Every once in a while, you know, if you have the sun out and you want to find that moment, then that's fun. But you can definitely see a big difference in the flaring between the two lenses. The DZO is much more controlled, way less flaring going on, very just kind of pleasant. Whereas the Mikey has a little bit more character in the flares, depending on what lens you're using, especially in the 35. I don't know if it's supposed to flare like this without the ND filter that I'm using, the, the adapter that I'm using, or if it just flares like this on its own. I have flared the lens before and I thought the flare looked nice. This one looked really different. I'm using my Nanlite Forza 500 with a Fresnel attachment on it to ping the lens here to kind of get that flaring um, to kind of mimic the sun. Um, so there may, maybe, maybe that has something to do with it. But either way, there's definitely a pretty unique flare coming off that 35 millimeter. So the Mikeys are definitely leaning more in that vintage category versus the more contemporary, whereas the DZO just a little bit closer to that, I would say. 
Something to say about the Vespids and versus the Mikeys and how the Vespids are a little bit sharper, that might come in handy when you're using a full frame lens because you are going to um, be in different scenarios where things might be even a little bit more out of focus because you're wide open on a full frame camera. Maybe that sharpness will help you out a little bit where it's gonna be a little bit harder to find focus with the Mikeys just because they're kind of soft overall. But in most cases, I prefer the softness. But as always, if you've heard this before, you can always soften a lens later. You can always you know, put a filter on there or do something in post, whereas you can't always bring back sharpness. So that's something to consider when you're looking at these two lenses. And I did also give points to the DZO because they have the foot markings and the aperture markings on the camera assistant side of your camera, which for me, if I'm gonna be using cinema lenses, I'll probably have a camera assistant pulling focus with a remote follow focus. So for me, that makes more sense than having it on the operator side. Now, some people in the comments said that's really not a big deal, but I disagree. I don't think you'd be using cinema lenses as a solo operator very often, because if you are, you're not, Pulling, a, pulling focus on cinema lenses is really hard because they have the nice long throws. Actually, just to, actually the DZO has a little bit less of a long throw than the Mikey, so that's something to consider. But if I was just gonna be a solo operator operating a camera by myself without a camera assistant, I would probably pick up a DSLR lens and put a gear on that instead, or a mirrorless lens, you know, a photography lens, rather than using a cinema lens. If you're using a cinema lens, you're probably gonna want to follow focus and a uh, AC because the throw is just so long, you're not gonna be able to calibrate that to just pull focus very easily. You, you know, you're gonna have to really throw that focus with your hand. It's really not practical and I wouldn't recommend it at all. So yes, I do think that the marking should be on the camera assistant side and not on the operator side of the camera. The DZO is pretty nice too because it has aperture markings on both sides um, and then it has the meters on the other side. So if you like to use meter rather than feet, I guess it's on the other side, so that's not a bonus. Whereas the Mikey's kind of like that too. It's kind of like they have both on there, which is pretty common on cinema lenses, but they're kind of going the opposite direction. I don't know why that is. I don't know why not everything is marked on one side of the lens. That just makes more sense to me. But I do want to stop real quick and thank today's sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to present your work online. If you're anything like me, you are filming stuff like this, you're trying to do this as a career, you're going to need a website to put your work on to show off what you're capable of so you can get more jobs. With Squarespace, that's really easy because you can just embed videos wherever you want on the page. You can add captions, you can start a blog, you can create a contact form so people can actually reach out to you and find you. And this is just really handy to have all this in one place and not just on Instagram or some other social media that might die tomorrow. It's best just to have every everything living on your website and Squarespace makes it easy to build that. So if you're looking for a website, you can just click the link in the description below or use code Spencer Sakurai when you check out to get a free trial and 10% off your purchase. And I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video.
that's my quick comparison between the two. I would highly recommend either one of these lenses given the cost. These are very inexpensive for cinema lenses and I'm really happy that I have the Mikeys in my kit for when I'm doing commercial work and stuff like that where I need something that just looks nicer than my vintage lenses and is more practical on set. Having cinema lenses is so nice for that sort of thing. So I would definitely recommend either one of these. Um, just You just gotta kind of decide if you want a little bit sharper look, a little bit more blue magenta look um, with controlled flaring or if you want to get a little bit more vintage on your look and have you know a little warmer, a little less sharp, and a little bit more character with the flares, and you might want to pick the Mikeys instead. Um, if you look at the other reviews online, you might see that the DZOs are probably more consistent in color across the board, whereas I found that my 85 millimeter and my 50 millimeter are a little cooler looking than the 24 and 35 in my set of the Mikeys, so that is something to consider as well. Well, if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, and as always, I'm Sensor Sakurai. Until next time, see ya.